Hey folks, not a wonderful day today. Uh, we got a storm threat, we got a threat of a tornado, and it's really windy, and there's blotches of rain all over the place. So <laughs> I gotta go and do some shopping. I gotta go to the post office first. Zach's waiting for something important, so he wants me to go every day. And I'm hoping to get out and back before the next rain hits. They're really big raindrops, which tells me they're falling from a great distance, and they're going to be cold, and I'm not nuts about cold rain. So. But when I get back, I have a couple of things I want to talk about, and I'm going to talk about the green screen here. And something else I don't remember. <laughs> so hopefully by the time I get back, I'll remember. So it's 27. Doesn't really feel like it, but the sky is pretty overcast. Ominous looking clouds up there. I remember what I was going to talk about now. So, I'm going to head out and hopefully I will be dry when I get back. Back from my tour, I'm going to do things a little bit differently this time. Uh, first, there's a couple of things I'm going to talk about. Uh, first of all, the bins up in the trail. When I was editing the video, I noticed that one in the middle was upside down. And I'm kind of thinking somebody probably talk, knocked one off. Because there was two stacks of two. So, somebody probably knocked the top one off. I don't think it was West Cass that actually did it, so... You probably know who did it. <laughs> Same ones that usually move them around. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about my green screen here. Um, until I get my proper lighting, everything's just kind of messed up at the moment. So I got the audio kind of worked out, but it's it's not going to be... I have to talk loud in order for this camera to pick up my voice all that well. Or great, whatever. So, uh, problem I'm having is this camera has a minimum distance. I think it's four feet for me to be in focus. I am about three right now as I'm sitting here. Actually, it kind of looks a little farther than that, but it's not. It's, it's thirty-one inches. <laughs> really just happened to be right there. So I'm like 31 inches away from the camera. I'm like, sure it's really rocky. So I'm going to be a little bit out of focus. So I'm not too worried about that. I can move back further. But I think once I get lighting on the screen, proper lighting for it, I should say, then I can move it back a little farther and then I can move back a little farther. And it kind of help it a little bit. And it'll be a little smaller in the screen as well. But once I get my microphone clip on mic, then my voice will be a lot better. <clears throat> I'm losing it right now, but you know, you'll hear me a whole lot better and things will be much better that way. It's still a work in progress. But as, as far as the screen itself, uh, I'll, sh I'll show it to you without anything in the background here. It's, there's a lot of shadows and that. I still got to put a, a brace across the bottom to stretch the bottom out so it's a little more even. But right now there's, there's wrinkles in it and stuff so they get different shades of green on there and different levels of lighting. So what I do with the software is I, I have to select a range. So any... basically what I do is I, I draw a rectangle. I, I can't move my arm that way. Draw a rectangle and holy smokes. Whatever's inside that rectangle, it takes that range of, of greens and that's what it makes invisible. So if I put my head down like this, the screen gets brighter and it goes outside that range and that's what's causing all that fuzziness behind me. It's not uh, a cloud of cicadas or anything, it's just, it's just the the background's changing. And if I turn my lights off here, I still want to have everything set up properly, but if I turn my lights off, you can see the big difference it makes. So if I move around, now there, there's quite a range in, in differences there. I turn the light back on, and all of a sudden the screen gets brighter. Well, that's, that's the whole idea of the lights. It just makes it the whole background really bright and gets rid of any shadows in that. So it's a little more consistent. So the problem is, if I, when I, I set it, um, if I, I can adjust the amount that it senses, I don't know how to explain it, but if I set it too high, then I, I start getting, you start seeing through inside my hat here, there's different areas that just starts sparkling almost. So I can't set it at maximum to, you know, kill the background properly because I get that. So I have to adjust it to where it's nice. And then if I turn my head to the side or if I put my head down <clears throat> or if I show this, it changes the background because the camera adjusts to the brightness of the thermometer and the background gets darker and the fuzz shows up again. So that's that's what I need the lighting for. I think... I think that's all there was to talk about with that. So... The whole thing is, once I get my lights, I can move the screen backwards further. So I can move backwards further. And things will look better. And I won't take up quite as much of the screen. Which is better than... You know, my first video where I was like, <laughs> right up close because I couldn't move the screen back as far as it is right now, so everything was really close. So, 
I'm still learning anyway. Just figure out what works and what doesn't. But biggest issue right now is the light. And I haven't looked the last few days, but I think I should get my lights next week. I'm hoping. <laughs> And I kind of think there was one more thing I was going to talk about. Yes, there was. Um, since I put the UV filter on my camera, it's made a big difference. You're not seeing the, the dust cloud on the lens anymore. But unfortunately, it hasn't stopped the image stabilization from messing up in that trail. So it's definitely the sun flashing on the screen <clears throat> that's causing the problem. So I thought maybe the sun reflecting out the dust was the issue, but no dust on this filter, so that's not the issue. It's just, it's the sun itself. And fortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. So, deal with that, I guess. Uh, I don't know. So... <laughs> Went out, and uh, first thing I did was go to the post office, grab the mail, went to Value Mart, did some shopping, grabbed my Timmy's, and went across the street, and as soon as I, before I even stopped, the fire department gets a call. July 15, 2021. The time is 158849. Okay, okay, it's just, it's just an alarm. No big deal. <laughs> so I stop. I'm sitting there, <clears throat> and the wind starts getting really, really strong. And I look behind me, and there's another round of rain coming. But the wind was really warm, so that was that was kind of nice. So I didn't worry about it. So, I started heading up the road uh, to talk to the gents because they're going to wonder where the fire department went. And... Fire dispatch, turn here engine one. Go ahead, engine one. You can show engine one on scene. Looks like the building has been evacuated. Nothing showing. Brawl will be command and mobile. We'll be investigating. Roger that. Engine 1 on scene. Building has been evacuated. Bravo in command and mobile will be investigating. The time is 15. Fire dispatch. Once you're in command. Go ahead. You can show we are sending a crew inside to investigate. Roger that. Command, sending a crew inside to investigate. The time is 15, 16, 02. Uh, when the Children's Center gets... <laughs> I'll explain that in a second. <laughs> when the Children's Center has a fire alarm, or the retirement home, or the hospital, I think there's one other place. Blythe automatically responds as well. So I knew Blythe was going to be coming into town because they, it, it wasn't a false alarm this time. It wasn't accidentally set off. They were in the building investigating, trying to figure out what's going on. So I figured, okay. So I'm sitting there and then I hear a siren. So I said, oh, I got to turn the scooter around so I can get it on video. The truck coming in.
and <laughs> just as the supply truck gets there, they tell them they can stand down. They're not needed. So his response was, Tank 8, arriving scene, leaving scene, returning to Holland, or something like that. It, it, it made me laugh. <laughs> Return to Bly Station. Copy that. Tank 9 is arriving scene and clearing scene. Returning to Bly Station. They didn't even have to stop. He was doing a drive-by. So I thought it was kind of funny. Fire dispatch. Stress here in command. So I guess I'll finish this video for the tour. Um, it started raining again, but this time it was a, a nice gentle rain. It wasn't heavy, it wasn't really big raindrops, and it wasn't cold. So I just kind of went for a tour. So that's what I'll finish this off with. Ah, I almost forgot what I just noticed. <laughs> I sit here, I look up, and Ken's bike hanging up here above me, and I see, looks like a, a clob of dirt on the back tire. Nope, it's another hornet's nest. <laughs> I don't know if that's from last year or if it's from this year, but I just noticed it. So i try to get a bit of video of it and see if it shows up okay. That's kind of cool. Kind of makes me wonder where else in here that they, they might be. Okay, that's it for sure. I shall wait to her now.